Have you ever seen those animations of a soft body Tetris game? There's this channel, C4D4U, that has been uploading different versions of the same concept for more than three years now. But apparently that's not an actual game. So I always wondered, would that be fun to play? Let's find out. I started the journey by doing some research on how to work with soft body physics in Unity. I found a couple of frameworks that do the trick, and I ended up using one called Obi. Most of these plugins follow a similar approach. They transform rigid 3D models into a collection of tiny spheres, or particles, so that we can apply forces to different points of the object independently, instead of dealing with it as an atomic piece. These particles follow several constraints to more or less keep the aspect of the original model, but allowing small alterations to convey the impression of the object being soft, wobbly, or squishy. I had to test the tools before working on the Tetris clone, and I have to say I had a ton of fun doing it. Like, look at this guy. I might have spent more time than planned playing around with these silly objects, but eventually made a couple of scenes to try controlling soft body objects and making them collide with each other to see how they behave. Once I felt comfortable with the framework, I was ready to build some jelly-looking Tetris pieces, so I modeled 3D versions of the original Tetris blocks. By the way, these are called tetrominoes, and are all the geometric shapes we can build out of four squares connected at the edges, apart from rotations of these. In my models I decided not to make these inner cubes visible though. I imported the models into Unity and assigned them materials following the Tetris color convention. Finally, I let the framework do its magic and turn them into something I would definitely chew. There are many settings we can tune to achieve different levels of chewability, by the way. This is good enough for now. At this point we have a simulation similar to the one that inspired me to work on this project. It's time to turn it into a game. I started by making different tetrominos randomly spawn from the top of the screen, and I gave the player control over the position and rotation of the falling piece. It is important to note here that the player controls are based on physics. I decided to move and rotate the pieces by applying forces to them. We need to do it like this, to make them feel wobbly. There would be no feeling of softness if the environment wasn't ruled by the laws of physics. This is a big change for the user experience compared to more standard Tetris games, and something we have to accept if we want soft body dynamics. At this point we can stack soft tetrominos on top of each other, but eventually we'll run out of space. So we need to develop the classic line clear mechanic. This one is really tricky in our case. There's two things we need to deal with. First of all, we need to identify when to clear a line, which is not trivial because our game space is continuous. It is not a discrete matrix, as it is in the original game. But let's assume that's already taken care of for a minute. Then, when a line is cleared, we usually need to break the tetrominos into smaller pieces, to remove the parts of each block that were in the clear line. I focus on this second problem first. In classic Tetris this is relatively easy to do, because the pieces are built as groups of small squares, which, by the way, are called minos. But our 3D, physics-based, non-discrete context makes this more complex. Pieces can be in weird angles, and their decomposition is also technically more challenging. I consider three different approaches to tackle breaking the blocks apart. At first, I was thinking of doing something similar to the classic game, building the tetrominos as a set of four minos tied together in a more literal fashion, so that I could make some of them disappear when a line is cleared. In this case, the minos would be 3D cube models. The thing is, I wasn't sure how that would go along with the idea of having soft body pieces. Would each cube be a soft body? How were they going to stick together to form a tetromino? And were they going to feel soft in this configuration? There were just too many open questions with this approach. I also tried cutting the tetromino along a plane, defined by the clear line. And I mean cutting the 3D mesh of these gummy bears like we would do with a knife. The problem with this approach is that it strays too far from Tetris. It would allow us to have many different shapes in play, and thus making it extremely difficult to fit new pieces into the empty spaces, which is the fun part of this game. So I decided to stay true to the classic approach, as true as I could at least. Tetrominos break apart as if they were built as a set of four cubes, when they are not really, and clearing a line takes away some cubes. Technically speaking, I did it by replacing the 3D models with new ones which are conceptually missing minos. This switcheroo magic trick happens in an instant so the player perceives it like the pieces adapt into new shapes. As a first step I made them decompose into their minos, and then I improved on that to replace them with the actual shape that results after the line is cleared. As a final note on this, notice that this approach introduced more differences with the original game. 
For example, a tetromino could be placed in a particular position that allows new decompositions. See this cube. We can now make it land at a 45 degree angle and then, maybe, the line clear just considers the mino on the bottom, turning this piece into a tiny L shape. This doesn't happen in Tetris. But this kind of depends on how we identify when a line needs to be cleared. Let's go back to that one now. I developed an algorithm which defines what it means to complete a line in this game, which also supports adding a bit of tolerance, meaning to accept having tiny gaps between pieces in a horizontal line, to make it easier and more fun to play. It works by constantly casting an array of rays, for each line looking for pieces. If all of the rays watching at a particular line find a hit, that means the line is complete and should be cleared. Tolerance is introduced by allowing the line clear even if not all of the rays find pieces in their way, as long as the amount of successful rays passes a certain threshold. Before moving into the results, all this talk about algorithms reminds me that <coughs> you really helped me beat the YouTube algorithm by leaving a like. <laughs> Please consider doing it if you enjoyed the video so far. And also think about subscribing. I do silly games like this all the time. With the core mechanics in place, it was time to address some of the first experience issues. The most annoying thing at this point is that the pieces tend to build unbalanced foundations, which makes it really hard to add more pieces on top and continue clearing lines. This happens mainly because the blocks react on impact and to gravity, causing them to rotate into awkward positions. I fixed the issue by making the pieces lock into place after landing, completely disabling rotation from that point forward. This improved playability, but I think it also made the pieces feel less spongy, but I'm okay with the trade-off. I also tried limiting the fall in Tetromino's rotation to 90 degree angles, to make sure the pieces always fall in Tetris valid positions, but I didn't like how the controls felt, so I didn't keep it. I then moved into developing the level system and the game over mechanic. The level increases after 10 lines are cleared and this makes the Tetromino's fall faster. The official Tetris guidelines, and yes, that exists, defines a very specific curve for the speed of each level, which I definitely didn't follow for this project. I also worked on a scoring system. The guidelines describe several different approaches for this. I went for the most simple one, which assigns different amounts of points to single line clears, double clears, triples and quadruple line clears, which are called Tetris in case you didn't know. All of these are also multiplied by the current level value to increase points earned in harder levels. But there are some other scoring systems that are far more complex than this one. These give points to the player when performing other types of crazy maneuvers, like not only for clearing lines. After that I made it possible to see the next Tetrominos the player is going to get with a simple temporary UI for debugging purposes. The Tetris guidelines recommend having the next 6 pieces in display, but showing 3 seems to be more standard. <laughs> By the way, there's a ton of crazy rules and very specific details in these guidelines. I didn't develop many of the supposedly mandatory features of a game of Tetris. There's lock delays, soft drops, ghost pieces, hold options, T-spin recognition rules, and many other instructions with catchy sci-fi names. Being too lazy to work on those, I decided to call it here and went back to improving the player experience, mainly focusing on the issues that arise from the twist we put on the game the blocks being pieces of candy. The game is still a bit frustrating. When the tower starts to rise high, it becomes increasingly harder to build on top of previous mistakes. So I made the play area much smaller to keep the game short and sweet. Now we can place the camera closer, giving more attention to the true protagonist of this Tetris variation, our slimy blocks. I actually did this because having too many soft bodies was causing performance issues. I also wanted to give the player some indication of how full a line is, as it is not obvious just by looking at it, especially due to the tolerance we added to the line completeness check algorithm. I added a little circular progress UA element to the left of each line to help with this issue, and moved on to adding the finishing touches to complete the game. I completed developing the display for the list of next Tetrominos, made general improvements to the UI and tweaks to materials, put together something for the background, played around with some post-processing for the camera, chose a font and added some effects to make line clears more juicy. Then I turned my attention to sound and music. This is how the game sounds at this point. Yeah, so I asked for help with the music and the sound effects and this is the result. The music is adaptive, by the way. It changes slightly to match the tension of the game. Watch my video on adaptive music if you want to learn more about this topic. I put together a very quick menu screen, simply a button to start the game and a label showing your last score. 
I made some soft drominos bounce around to introduce the core mechanic even before the game starts. And that's it, the game is done. Well, it's not perfect, but it's good enough to answer my original question. Would the soft body Tetris game be playable? What do you think? Give it a try and let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think it looks cool, but it's actually a piece of